Hello everyone, hope you're doing well. We are having a look at a dead blog for the RDFLT and also the BMD4M. Both of these vehicles are premiums coming into the next update and also they're going to be pre-orders so you can purchase either of them right now. If you do want to purchase them, make sure to use the partner links, I'll leave them in the description, and also a pinned comment for you, you'll get a discount, you'll be able to support the channel, and also get my decal in the game. So overall it's multi-beneficial, so why not get it done? The RDFLT and the BMD4M are two light tanks that are coming in for America and also Russia respectively. I'll be doing individual reviews on them and uh, they'll be on the channel in the coming days. But generally what I would say is they're both looking like fine vehicles. I just don't know if I personally would purchase them just because they're very high tier for premiums and also the 2S38 exists for Russia. But if you are interested, especially in a HSTVL type platform, these two vehicles can be fantastic for you. Let's get into both the vehicles and my general thoughts. The RDFLT is another vehicle which was part of a light tank program that the HSTVL was part of too. It was basically based on the development of the HSTVL, and in October of 1980, AAI Corporation presented a prototype for the RDFLT light tank. It featured a new engine, a new hull reducing the combat weights to the allowed amount for transportation by helicopter, and several prototypes were made, but the vehicle was never accepted in serial production. Now, the RDFLT is the same BR as the HSTVL, it's just a premium. You can also get a pre order bonus title of Rapid Deploy, you get 2,500 Golden Eagles, and also 20 days of premium with the pack as well as the vehicle. Now, the gun is exactly the same as the HSTVL. Um, it's very good uh, at uh, rapid fire. It has a 1.5 second reload, and also they recently added a tracker to it so you can track planes, and also HEVT. So it's now a multi-roll gun with very good elevation and also very good depression. Now, the gun itself has an APF-SDS round, which generally is pretty good at penetration compared to a lot of other light tanks, but still can struggle with some post-penetration effects, especially when facing certain vehicles with quite a lot of armoured layers, mainly Soviet tanks, but there's obviously some others in the game that can tank a few shots too, and it can be annoying to use uh, this vehicle because of that, but against every other type of vehicle, you can do a lot of damage with it, and also, the main thing is to be a mobile scout. So how is this different from the HSTVL? Basically, the gun platform is the same, but uh, the engine is worse. So it's slightly slower than the HSTVL, but it's also slightly lighter. So technically, the worse engine isn't fully compensating uh, for the weight difference, meaning that the HSTVL still is a bit more mobile around the place, but it's close enough with the RDFLT. The big one for me with it is it's actually a diesel engine, so it won't make as much noise as the HSTVL, which is great, but the other part of it is it doesn't get smoke grenades, so repositioning is not this thing's strong suit. It also has less armor on the turret than the HSTVL, but to be honest, that doesn't really matter a huge amount uh, because of the fact that the HSTVL is uh, already not very survivable against most of the rounds that you'll find. The cool thing about it is this has three crew members, you have one in the turret, and then you have two down below, and as long as you have those two down below, then the vehicle survives. Uh, it actually uh, is able to, uh, it's able to continue the fight. So the gunner and also uh, the commander, uh, sorry, and the driver are in the chassis. So your turret can just keep getting hit over and over and over again. And as long as those, those two aren't hurt, you're good to go. And with the very angled uh, front plate of this thing, that can happen quite a lot. So that's why stuff like the HSTVL and the RDFLT are really high in BR. It's not because of the fact that, uh, you know, they're just uh, oppressed compared to stuff like the 2S38. It's because their survivability is insane uh, compared to other vehicles. Now, this being a very high tier premium, it's a rank 7 premium, meaning you can research all of the tech tree with it. Obviously, that's really nice and generally pretty good. But I would say also the top tier matchmaking right now 
would not favor a vehicle like this. You could use it as a passive scout, you know, while the enemy is running over you. You could uh, try and help your team overall and try and flank and spank and bang, but most of the time you're just going to get caught out by the oncoming rush of leopards, uh, you know, T-80s, T-90s, and everything just running at you. So it's going to be a rough time. If you are a person who enjoys top tier, though, and wants to kind of, uh, you know, improve uh, your lineups, then, of course, this vehicle is one to look for. But you also have the clickbait, which will probably be on sale pretty soon, whether it is this Christmas or even the summer. The next vehicle available for pre-order is the BMD4M. This is a vehicle which is very similar to the BMD4. I would once again class this as a side upgrade. Uh, I wouldn't say this is a full upgrade over it. It's actually going to be at the same BR as the standard BMD4, which is only an event vehicle. So if you like the BMD4 platform, this is one of the ways that you can get access to it. Uh, because there doesn't seem to be any plans right now uh, to bring one to the tech tree. This is going to be a rank 6 premium, so not as good as the RDF LT, meaning that it can't research all of the tech tree at 100%, obviously can't touch those rank 8s, but overall it's going to be fine. It'll give you 15 days of premium account, 2000 GE, and then a pre-order bonus of no one but us title, and also you'll get a landing BMD4 uh, M decal 2, which is one where it's being parachuted in. Uh, both of these vehicles technically could be parachuted in. The BMD4M was a further development of the BMD4. The vehicle itself was 80% unified with the BMP3, received a new chassis and a set of add-on armor. The modification is produced by the Kurgan uh, machine building plant and is currently in service with the Russian army. And so that's basically what this vehicle is. It was a upgrade in quotations of the BMD4, but it was basically an upgrade designed to make it easier to service and also easier to produce by giving it a lot of commonality with the BMP3. Both these vehicles have the same engine. They have a 500 horsepower engine. They have the same transmission, the BMP3 and the BMD4M, and also a lot of similar features. And this actually is kind of a detriment to the vehicle. So even though the BMD4M has extra armor, so it has it on the sides and it has it on the front, and it has, you know, the 500 horsepower engine, it takes a hit in the transmission. The transmission is nowhere near as good as the BMD4, so you can't scoot around backwards as well as you could previously. And that is a problem for it, you know? It's one of those where you will not be able to get in and out of action as quickly as you want to, so you're going to have to be more and more aggressive with this thing. It does have all of the other factors of the BMD, though. has the AT gems, the tandem warhead ones, which are really good, but you only get access to four of them. It has the 30mm, uh, which has the APDS, so not APFSDS, just standard APDS, which will go through most of the vehicles that you face. has the really good stabilizer, has the ability to fire everything on the move, has the thermals, you know, has the smoke grenades, has pretty much everything you would ever want. The only problem with it is, of course, it's a premium, so you would have to purchase it in order to get access to it. Now, uh, I would say, being at 9.3, uh, Russia has a really nice line up around 9.3, and also, it's one of those BRs which is quite fun right now, because, of course, they pushed up a lot of the other premiums to 10.7, uh, which was great, so that just makes it a little bit easier. Generally, what I would say for something like the BMD4M, though, is uh, it's one of those which I would personally purchase if uh, I, you know, was buying premiums of this BI, if I didn't have a lot of it researched already, uh, because of the fact that I just really like the platform. It's super mobile, it's very nice to be aggressive with, I really do like uh, scouts, which also pack a punch, and uh, this one is kind of the quintessential one in the game that can do that. The only problem with it, as I said, is unfortunately there isn't a standard tech tree one, and that kind of sucks. It would have been really nice uh, to see one of those in the game. So both of these vehicles are good purchases if you want, you know, high tier premium light tanks. For me personally, I think the BMD 4 m is in a much better position than the RDF LT, but maybe at some point America will come shining at the top two of ground like it used to a very long time ago. As always, I hope you have a wonderful day, and I'll see you next time. I'd just like to thank GMG Smiley, CD Beans, 
Chieftain Mike, EMN3 Galaxy, Tulio Pontikovo, Brendan Quinn, Carrion Crow, Gus Irenicus, Pyman, Wartinder, Teddy, Daniel Stanton, Martinez, B. Young, Ozzy Panzer, Alan Hacker, Liam Shear, Opium Prime, Lafouche, Sem, Aslan, Uncle Bean, and Derek R. For supporting the channel.